please state your name. Marvin Tilly Jr. Okay. And do you affirm that what you are saying in this interview is true and that HEAL and the HEAL Report has permission to use this interview? Yes, I do. Okay. What programs were you in? The program I was in was Abolition Wilderness in Cleveland, Georgia. Okay. And tell me about that experience. Were you dressed by name or assigned a code or number I while you were enrolled? I given a nickname. Okay. Everybody there had to earn a name. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was given two of them, actually. The first one was Green Wood Duck. The second one was Brown Shroot. Braille Shroot? No, Brown Shroot, like a rat. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. It's uh, all right. I don't care. I mean, you can leave that in. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, that ain't the worst part of the stuff that I've seen happen there, so, yeah. Right. And when were you enrolled there? When did you leave? So what years were you um, in the program? I was there, let's see, i got to do some math. Hold on. 96 through 99. Okay. I think. Yeah. 96 to 99. Okay. And was there a level system of privileges yes, and consequences? Was. Yes, there was. And can you I, tell me about that? <laughs> okay. When you first come in, you have no mail, no contact, no phone calls for six months. Wow. Until you reach the first level. It takes that long to reach the first level. If any during those time you lose your own temper, get in a fight, whatever, or go against orders, basically, I mean literally, or basically don't do your chores, your privileges are provoked. Wow. Yep. That could be anything from watching TV to um, having seconds to having pop, um, whatever, or sweets. Did they include contact with the outside world as part of the privileges, like um, yeah, yeah. normal? Your family, your family coming up to visit, um, they would screen your letters and your phone calls. Did they force you to change any letters you wrote? Yep. I've had that happen many a times. Was there any way for you to contact I the smuggled. authorities or anything like that? Um, no, there was not. Because anywhere you went, whether it be the doctor or whatever, on the outside, whether it be a regular, like, physician, you had to be literally watched 24-7. Wow. So you yeah. were denied, and, yeah, you were denied kind And the, oops, sorry, and the shanties we lived in, I hate to call it that, but it's the truth. The windows were made out of the plastic wrap, like the teleurethane wrap. Okay. Yeah, and we like had what they call visqueen or something. I think they call it visqueen or something, or tarp. Yeah, it was a tarp over the roof, like the color tarps, the blue and brown. Okay. The bicolor, that was the roof. The sides were screened, and then during the winter, we had that, I call it plastic. It's what you most people put up their windows to hold out the uh, cold. Okay. Yeah, we had that. And the we cooked with wood. We had wood stoves, um, literally in the shanties. Yeah. But then we had a latrine that we had to go to every night and excuse my French for lack of better words, but right on the front porch of the shanty we had what we call a piss bucket that we had to empty every morning. Wow. Mm -hmm. I hate to say it for the lack of better words, but literally that's what it was. It's all right. I'm sure people will understand. That sounds like something out of a Roots or some slave movie with the um, living that's conditions. Basically, what it was. I mean, yeah. if you missed the hay, you had to chop down trees, bust up wood, dig up stumps, um, carry a wheelbarrow slam full of pea gravel. Okay, and the camp, you've seen the size of the camp by the square mileage. Right. Right. One side over there by the lake on the, um, on the graphics is where the gravel pile was. The tribe I was in was called the Creek. That's all the way on the other side, near the front desk. Wow. Yeah, and you had to carry wearables. And had whatever the severity of your behavior was, like if you got in a fight, automatically 15 wearables full. Wow. Did they instigate fights? Did they encourage fights yeah, or instigate did. them between yeah. the kids? The counselors have, yep. I've had many glasses broken due to that because I do wear glasses. Um... Let's see. Thirdly, I would say the restraints they used, which is what caused that little boy's death, is yeah. what happened. Um, the basket holes is what they used on me many times. They'll literally pick you up off the ground and put you in it and slam you, and then put their knee in your back and wow. hold you there. Mm -hmm. 
I've seen that personally myself. And if you're bleeding when you get up, guess what? That's your own damn fault, according to them. Right. They're like the bully or bigger, you know, who says, stop mm-hmm. hitting yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, it's pecking order is what's in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you receive uh, the, school, um, Go ahead. <laughs> uh, the school system, I hate to say this, but I would have been better off receiving an education from a third grade teacher. Wow. Mm-hmm. Did you get any uh, usable diploma? Was it? Uh, no, I never got no diploma or nothing from there. I literally, after I got out, I had to make up the work that I lost. Wow. Luckily, I did graduate early after that, but from high school, I luckily did. Yeah. I mean, I hate to say it, it wasn't from the lack of them. Sorry, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> um. Then from there... Um, let's see, what else? One of the things that really stuck with me is how they teach kids to swim. If you were scared of water, which a lot of foster kids are, but they yeah. have a phobia against it because of whatever reason, they would literally put you in a rowboat, take you out to the dock, which is 50 yards out in the water, and leave you there and make you swim back. Wow. Mm-hmm. So were you in the foster care system? Was it mostly foster care? I was in Georgia. I was in Georgia. It was DJJ, which is Department of Juvenile Justice, or foster care. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we were bumped together. There was upwards of 40 kids in the same shanty. Wow. So was, did they use isolation or anything like that? Did you guys, were there, was there any kind of solitary confinement um, punishment? No, basically if you misbehaved, you worked all night doing chores or whatever. Okay. You were on midnight, you were on graveyard shift, that's what they called it, graveyard duty, and then you maybe got an hour of sleep and then got up and started all over the next day. Wow. The wheelbarrows and the um, weight of the items you had to pull, would you say it was more than 20% of your body weight at the time? Yeah, way more than that. I mean, you got to realize, pea gravel holds water. And I was up in the mountains of Georgia. So, go figure. I mean, I was 10, 11, and 13 at the time. Wow. Mm-hmm. For other... Um, I don't know if they're cadets or other kids in the program. Were they we put call them in campers? Okay, we call them campers. Okay, were other campers like that were there longer put in charge of the younger campers? Yep, they were considered junior staff members. Okay, and did they receive any training beyond just nope. making their levels? Nope. Okay. Nope. Are there any specific incidents you can recall? Were you ever farmed out to work for other um, agencies or businesses or Yeah, farms? we were on many occasions. We were actually, yeah, we were. On many occasions, we were t- rounded up in a um, van, and we were taking to different facilities, like a farmer for once. We helped them bring in their harvest. And then another one we helped with the construction of a building right down the road. Sorry about that. Okay. So you were saying you were forced to build a building? Yeah. We were forced to clear the land, start the foundation, and start putting up the frame. And were you paid for any of that? Nope. No compensation. That's an issue, yeah, yeah, we've been hearing about, too. We were contacted by contractors in California who said they wanted to go against a program in California because they were stealing their construction jobs and they weren't bonded or certified to do the work, so it was illegal Mm -hmm. for them to be doing the construction work. And they were like, who do we even report this to? (laughs) I'm like, well, that's a... That's beyond well, I mean, usually what our issues are at HEAL because we're looking at the child abuse and violations against children and trying to stop that, and we're like, wow, this is a whole other <laughs> area. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, this is another incident. It's not, I reckon you say it is related, but it's not related. Yeah. We used to hike what they call the Appalachian Trail. Okay. I'm highly allergic to pet poison ivy, poison oak, and poison sumac to the point if I get around it, I swell up like a monica man. Oh, and wow. I, mean, I remembered that we were hiking a couple times, and I swole up, and they told me, oh, you'll be fine. Oh, wow. And that went on for like three days to the point I passed out. So no medical and care? or No medical care to the point of when Tom Dingo, 
was the director during that time. And he, I don't know who it was, whenever, excuse my French for lack of better words, but shit hit the fan in 2005, but Tom Dingo was the one that actually tried to straighten junk up. Okay. And Sam left it all hellwire. And he was a big fat guy, but he left it all heck. And Tom Dingo tried, but by what I mean by that is he tried to get certified nurses in there. He tried, but the state wouldn't let him. There was no funding for it. Wow. I mean, you got to realize the equipment that we were working with, even when we were working, were out of date. We had 1950 model bulldozers. We had 1950 model dump trucks. We had all out of date stuff. We even our stuff in the wood shop that we had down there was so out of date. I promise you, it was probably half the stuff you would find in your granny's um, wood shop. Wow. Yeah. And they've been been so many times rigged, taped back together, and everything like that that it was a fire hazard. Wow. And this was a state run program, right? Was the state yeah yeah, yeah state ran and. The, the land itself, if I tell you what it was originally, you really would freak out. Because I did research after I got out myself. It was actually a toxic waste. waste. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's why the state acquired it so cheap. <laughs> did they have you guys cleaning up any of that? No, no. We never saw hide our hide our tail of it. It was just the fact that I always wondered why there was no fish in the lake that we swam in. Wow, so you were swimming in this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Do you still have all your hair? Mm, no. <laughs> no? Do you think that's part of it? Probably. Wow. But also, I come from a part of Georgia that's right down river of the nuclear plant also, so. Oh, wow. That ain't nothing. I mean, but, um, yeah, that's one thing. And then, I mean, another scare tactic that they used to do is literally scare you straight by... Um, they used to literally scare you to death by stories. Oh. Like bloody, gory stories. Wow. Yep. Was there sleep deprivation? I mean, do you think that was part of it? Did they tell you these things like, well, of course. It was like trying to break our world and rebuild us, okay. basically, is what it was. Um, that's basically what they were trying to do, break us down and rebuild us. Basically like a boot camp. I hate to say that. But that's really, honestly, because we had to march into the mess hall. We had to literally, um, we had sessioned quote-unquote groups every night. Were those confrontational? Sometimes, yes, there would be fights breaking out um, in the middle of groups. Um, that would be when there's 40 or 50 guys literally in a circle saying, well, today I had this against this dude, blah, 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 and that dude may have a grudge against you, and guess what? All hell breaks loose. Wow. Mm-hmm. So you would call each other out, you know, like, I don't think you yeah. were perfect today because you Pretty didn't much, fill up yeah. your wheelbarrow. You this. Yeah, you did this, or you slacked off when we were doing this, or you slacked off when we were doing that, or this, that, and the other, or you didn't have manners during mess hall, or this, that, and the other. Yeah. Was the food decent, or was it like... Um... It was government issue. Okay. Food. What I mean by that is... Same food you would get in a prison. Okay. Like the cheese was what they call pewter cheese. I don't know if you understand what I mean by that. No. It's a chemical that's in it that keeps a guy from having a certain problem. You get what I'm saying now? I'm not sure. Oh, you, okay. It's uh, down south, and I don't know if they do it up here where I'm at now, but in Georgia, they basically put chemicals in the prison food, and they did it in foster care and in group homes. It keeps down the sodomy. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the best way I know how to put it politely. Well, there's some old wives' tales. Uh, I'm not saying that's an old wives' tale, but about graham crackers. Graham crackers were supposed to stop people from having the urge um, um, to these do anything. Years they fed so. us a lot of what they call Peter cheese. Okay. That's what they called it. And that's what I've always heard it called all my life. 
and I don't know who, what the real name of it is. <laughs> That's okay. Maybe I can look it up and find out. We'll keep we'll put it in the um, slideshow portion because we have to have some kind of video to right. go with the audio. But I'll look up. Um, stuff. And then let's see. From there, I got. They were supposed to rebuild your. Because I went in under anger management. That's the reason I went in. Okay. Because, I mean, I had been in foster care off and on since I was five years old due to child abuse. Right. And so if anyone came up behind me or anything like that due to what my mom had done to me, I'd black out and uh, beat the tar out of you. Right. Well, they were supposed to teach you ways to handle that. You know, their, their ways of teaching you really was, I hate to say this, but <laughs> fighting. Right. And if they could, yeah. Because, I mean, there was times where we were on the Appalachian Trail, and there was two boys that got in a fight. For example, it was me and another boy. They made the boys circle around us. Wow. Mm-hmm. And made us duke us out. And the first one that fell was the one that was punished. Wow. Mm-hmm. Then from there, um, let's see. So pretty much it's. I hate to say this, but it's like Gladiator Camp, which is another juvenile facility, which was in Georgia. Okay. It's about like Alpine. And because basically you had the the blanket parties. You had all of that going on. What's a blanket party? <sighs> okay. Imagine you're asleep on the bottom bunk or top bunk. They come over. At all four corners, four different people hold it down, and everybody comes through with a soap in a sock or something in a sock and beat the living shit out of you. Wow. Mm-hmm. And someone's holding something in the boy's mouth to where the counselor can't hear it. So they would punish the whole group for the lack of the weakest link. Wow. So do you know... Um What's happened, I mean, to others who went through it the same as you? Like, do you know um, kind of the outcomes for some of the people? Two of them I do. The rest of them, no. Um, one of them actually OD'd. Uh. And the other one was serving life in prison. Wow. And then from there, me, I'm thankful because I got out of the system and went back to my granddaddy. Yeah. And I think that's what saved me was because shortly after that, when I graduated high school, I started messing up, and I was given the option of prison or military, and I joined the military. <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty much what straightened me out. Was the military a breeze after having been through Appalachian? Oh, hell yeah. I mean, literally, I'm sorry, but basically it was like I went to a pre, pre-boot camp. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Because I used to just look at the prison guard, I mean, the, sorry, not prison guard, but boot camp, um, you know, guards and stuff, and they would start calling me names, I'd look at them and just look at them with a smirk on my face, and they'd say, why are you smelling? I was like, is that the best you got? Right, right. <laughs> but then from there, I mean, that's really, I honestly, I mean, I hate to say it, but yeah, that's what prepped me. That's what it prepped you for. Right. I mean, because even after OTP, I still don't have ended up in juvie hall. I still ended up in boot camp, you know, like Macintosh. I still ended up in Alpine because I still had my anger problem. Right. Because of a teacher hitting me over the back with a metal ruler, I picked the teacher up and threw him through a window. So, basically, I still had the temper. Right. So that was because they said they had a 95% success rate. Right. what they advertise. Well... Unless I was one of the five percent that was not a success rate for three years. Right. They probably and didn't track it. They make up those numbers. We know mm -hmm. that, but Well, you know there's two other three other um places in Georgia that's about the same but they're still off the charts. Okay. To let you know. Um, one of them is Broken Shackles. Yeah, I know it's Broken for Shackles. A grown man. Yeah. I mean for teenage boys. The other one is Breaking Free. And the other one is, oh, God, um, it's out of Dublin. I can't think the name of it, but if I get the name of it, I'll send it to you. And it's just as bad. Okay. One in Dublin is. 
because those three, I was in those also afterwards. Wow. And uh, you were forced to go to their religious function, so in the same way with um, Abolition Wilderness. Right. So. Yeah, we um, know at Broken Shackle Ranch, I know of one serious incident, I think that's the only one I really know about out of there, was a um, young man was electrocuted. Yeah. And died. Well, I know of a good many out of that one also. Yeah. I know of my brother, actually. His hand was almost bit off by a horse. Wow. Yep, and I know of other ones where, like, boys' fingers were cut off with steel saws, stuff like that. Was this something that was an accident, or was that something that was done purposely? It was during, I don't know, because the kids were running the equipment. Oh, okay. I, yeah. It may be and just, it may be negligence then, because you shouldn't be yeah. letting children use dangerous equipment I mean, to provide. I mean, 11-year-olds running power saws. Wow, that's, Nail yeah. guns. I mean, I'm sorry, but who in their right mind, sorry, but would let allow that unsupervised? No one. Mm-hmm. I mean, even supervised, you know good and bad on well, I wouldn't allow it. Right. I mean, I've got a six-year-old, soon. I'm sorry, seven-year-old now, and I mean, I'm sorry, but I'd be damned if I allowed her to um, hold a skill saw. Right. So, it's just literally, I mean, all kinds of stuff, because at Broken Shackles, me, myself, because I was elected at junior staff, and I didn't want the position, and it was forced upon me, and I was moved to the cabin of where the junior staff was. And because I declined it, the actual staff members is the one that threw a blanket party on me. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Do you have um, lasting physical damage from your time in these programs? Like um, I do have a mucked up back from a roof I fell off of. Oh, wow. I fell off and hit the rain gutter sideways. And I have two lower discs that is screwed up, but... Yeah, um, with the one at Appalachian Wilderness, I would say not really. It's more of the psychological scars versus the physical scars. Right. Because to be allowed to treat kids the way they do is just... Because they still have their sister program that's running, which is Roosevelt. Right. From the last I heard, it's still running. Yeah, George is one of the... It seems like Mississippi's made some improvements, but I don't want to get too excited about things I've seen happening in Mississippi because I don't know if it's just symbolic, like what goes on in Utah. Once in a while, they'll shut down one program and say, oh, we found this. It's horrible. Well, that happened in Georgia, too, with Appalachian. You know, oh, we're shutting it down because mm-hmm. of all the allegations, but they allow the same stuff to go on at all these other facilities in the same right. state. So mm-hmm. it's more of a I mean, show to... There's at least six or seven programs all together in Georgia, and half of them are state-ran. Wow. Yep, because I was in Abolition Wilderness. I was in Roosevelt for a little bit, and they shipped me back to Abolition Wilderness. Um, Because I sort of tried to blow the whistle twice mm. when I told my caseworker, and they shipped me to Roosevelt. Well, after, I reckon you say the shit got swept under the rug, Right. I was shipped right back to Appalachian Wilderness. Wow. Mm-hmm. And cut off from the outside world from trying to blow the whistle. So the social services are actively covering up the abuses? Yep. Let me just tell you a short story of an example of how Georgia Defax is. Okay. I was messed with when I was in foster care, and this is the way the caseworker wanted me to prove I was. She wanted me to draw his private parts. Oh, wow. I was eight years old. That's just how messed up their system is. I mean, yeah. I don't know how that would assist anything. I mean, eight-year-olds aren't, you know, forensic artists. Right. <laughs> That's know, what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 I mean, in their eyes, two circles with a dot in it over his boots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly. But that's literally their way of proving stuff. Wow. Well, this is 
was the 90s, too, so it wasn't pre, you know, DNA analysis or anything like that, or other ways, I mean, asking others if they'd been victimized by the same person, I mean, that's just totally mishandled. Yeah, I mean, it's just totally, I hate to say this, but each child on the payload of that case worker was a paycheck. Yeah. That's really what it boiled down to being. I mean... We were filled way beyond capacity on numerous occasions at the camp where we had sleep bags thrown on the plywood floor. Wow. Because our group was only supposed to hold 34. There was many a times. I remember we had 75 to 100 kids. That's wild. In one place, like in one Mm -hmm. shanty? In one building. Yeah, one shanty. Okay. Basically, the best way I can describe how this thing was built you had literally trees that we had stripped. What I mean by that is that the branches and the bark, that was our four corners of the building. Okay. You would literally then nail two bikes all the way around and then lay plywood across it and then put plywood on the sides. And then I would say about a good three foot from the top, you would run your screen and your plastic. And then you would have the tree, you know, the actual big branches, that's what will be your rafters for the top. Wow. And that's literally how we ran it. We ran one like that for the shanty, and we had one like that for the latrine. We had one like that for the kitchen, and we had one like that for the tool shed. Wow. Was there a lot of, um, I know sepsis is one of the words, but there's something you can get. Syphilis and life and, um, let's see, what else? Scurvy. There was a lot of scurvy outbreak, and there was a lot of life outbreaks. Wow. Yep, and scurvy was from the vitamin C deficiencies. Wow. Yep, because mainly a lot of sailors would get that, scurvy. Right, right. Yep, and it's also coming from rotten food. Yeah. It's what scurvy comes from. Um... But there was a lot of, like, when one kid got sick, you they would quarantine us. We weren't even allowed to go into the mess hall. Wow. The whole group, we were quarantined, so. Were there other um, issues? Was Did you have problems with bugs or um, beyond life? Yeah, there was like... a lot of bed bugs, lice, um, believe it or not, snakes, because we were in the middle of the woods. Right. I mean, yeah, I mean, we were forced to where, like, the trails that we had to walk, like, to go to the latrine and stuff like that, we would wake them, and we would see nonstop snakes, like baby copperheads, um, cottonmouths, um, rattlesnakes. The wow. baby ones, but there's been many occasions I've known of the kids, when I was there, they got bit on numerous occasions. And the babies are more dangerous than the adults. Right. Yeah, my... Because they don't, they don't know how to control the poison. Right. My uncle was bit by a baby rattlesnake, um, I think, a couple of years back, and he had to be rushed to the hospital. Right, because, see, the babies will empty the full poison sack versus the adult, 99% of the time, that's what they call a dry bite. Okay. More like a warning. <laughs> Basically, yeah, because the only time they would actually drop venom is when they, they control their poison. Like, the only time the adults would drop venom in it is, like, let's say they see a rat that they're mm-hmm. going to eat for food, they would drop the poison in it. That would be the only time. Right. So there was, um, was there rodent problems as well? Yeah. There was a big rodent problem. Actually, that was my first encounter as far as back as I can remember of wharf rats. Were those, like, really big rats? <laughs> they're about the size of a household cat. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I showed a picture to my wife of what they were, and she said, holy shit. Yeah. That's basically what they are. They're about the size. Um, if you go on Google, they um, there's a, in the images, if you type in wharf rat, yeah. there's a dude holding a picture of one. Okay. And it looks like he's holding a cat. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, I mean, we did have scorpion problems, like the black scorpions. Um, during the summer, we did have spider problems, like black widow, brown recluse, 
I mean, which I'm used to those because I did live in the swamps. So, yeah. I mean, that's where I grew up. That's what's where my family was from. So all that kind of stuff I'm used to. It was just the way they handled it. I mean, literally there was one time where a boy got bit. They did, and I'm sorry this, I mean, like you literally, like you said, it was an old-timey slavery movie. It's the way it sounds like, but it's a thought on its truth. They cut an egg over the bite Martin, made another boy suck the venom out. Wow. Yep. I mean, that's just literally the stuff that's happened. And, I mean, it's just sick. Definitely, and it has to be stopped. We're working on that, but <laughs> it's an uphill battle because these people, for whatever reason, like their old ways and don't want to recognize human rights. I wish they would. Well, that's how Georgia is. Yeah. I hate to say it, but Georgia's still stuck in those ways, and it's sad, but it's the truth. I mean, it's going to be like pulling an eye tooth when it comes to that. I mean, there's been many, many of people that's tried to do that. And, I mean, <laughs> that's all I can say. Right. <laughs> but, I mean, there was protesters, from what I remember, about the one that I was staying in that was in Dublin. And, literally, um, yeah, they still get away with it. Yeah. Um, then the breaking free, yeah, it's for drug rehab people or people like me that had anger problems, but, um, they're still allowed because they're considered a non-profit organization. But, um, yeah, because they're classified as non-profit, they're allowed to do whatever the heck they want to do. That's ridiculous. Well, that's honestly the truth. Yeah. But they probably make a lot of money, right? I mean, well, obviously, Broken Shackle Ranch paid, what, over a $2 million wrongful death suit settlement, and they're still open? Yeah. I mean... Well, I mean, put it this way. They're considered non-profit, but yet they're the leading construction crew and welding crew in that area. Wow. And Breaking Free, another one. They are considered non-profit, but yet... They've opened one in Texas, one in Mexico, and they're opening one in Italy. And they're the leading flower place in that area. Wow. But yet they're considered non-profit. But if you buy, like, they'll ship um, coffee grounds back to Georgia for them to roast. If you try to buy a bag from them, it's $24 a bag. Wow. Must be some good coffee. It's locally grown <laughs> out of Columbia, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, if they're literally considered non-profit, how are they getting by with all that money? Right. I mean... And they're certainly not the using the money to improve the conditions and lives yeah. of the children. Mm-hmm. And, the, and in Broken Shackles, the kids are allowed la allowances, right? But yet they've set up a snack shack that they sell stuff back to the kids, and they're making money off the kids. Wow. And they what? probably sell it back at the extraordinary prices. Um, 20 ounce can um, bottle of pop, you get it for 250 Wow, okay. So, like, pro probably about a 150% increase. Right. On price. Because around here, where I'm at in Michigan, you can get a 20 ounce bottle of pop for a buck eighty nine. Yeah, and this uh, is over ten years ago, so it would have been less. Like ninety nine cents. Yeah. Probably for the same pop, and that was about the time that Vanilla Soda had just came out. The Coca Cola um, Vanilla Pop. Yeah. Had just came out, and that's when they started doing the "You Want a Free Pop" under the caps. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you get any, did, were you guys allowed to use the free cap? At, at their shop, yeah. That's it. That's the only place you're allowed to use them. Okay. Yep. Because I remember that the Dagon staff got pissed because I would win one almost every time I would buy one. <laughs> you're lucky. <laughs> at least in that regard. I, I yeah. would literally buy three, and two out of three would have the free um, pop underneath it. Oh, wow. And then I would actually trade them off for whatever another dude had bought. 
Um, you were only allowed to watch certain movies, and then I remember at Abolition Wilderness, their version of Sex Ed was, oh my God, I'll never forget it. It was a freaky ass movie. That's all I can think of. The best way to put it. It was a documentary, but it showed a camera on the inside of the woman, just at the point of, you know what? Wow. Yeah. And ten, nine, the youngest dude that was there that was in my group was eight. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, you can imagine. There was 70 of us there watching it all at one time. Do you remember the name of it? No, you can actually go on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, and it's right there on YouTube. We were made to watch it. But other than that, that's... And every year for Christmas, I think what we got was an apple, an orange, and a peppermint stick. That was our Christmas presents. Wow. Did you pay, were family members allowed to send you guys anything, or was that all confiscated and it you don't know what happened to it? We were confiscated, and we didn't know how to tell or what happened to it. Wow. Our clothes were gone through any time we went on home visits, if we did have the privilege to go on a home visit. When we came back, we were strip searched, body cavity searched. Um, everything that we brought back had to be searched down to the teeth. And that was across Basically, the board for kids who were there for foster care or for non-delinquency. Um, yep, for DJJ, yep. Yeah. Basically, when you came back, okay, let's say you spent a week out with the family. You came back, you're spending at least two hours going through um, process. Wow. process of being searched. I mean, that's how long it normally took. With me, I know because tobacco is a contraband in those places, and I've always been a smoker ever since I was six years old. And when I came back, they would try to nail me with it because they could smell it on me, but they never could catch anything on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not going to lie. I mean, shit, yeah, I smoked. I'm, I smoked all the way up to the camp, and then when I got to the camp, I gave my pack to the caseworker, and I said, here, take it. And she would hide it in the glove department. Wow. <laughs> the reason why is because I knew the rules. I knew what would happen. I yeah. knew how bad I would get punished if I got caught with that. So, I mean, from I mean, so that's the reason I always did it the way I did. <clears throat> so. I don't know what kids were disappeared or not, or if they were reported as runaways, but just never found. There was a bunch of kids that was reported as runaways. There was some that literally, I still don't know what happened to them. Um, like, they showed their behind really, really, really bad, beat the hell out of a staff member, and the next day, we were told they ran away. Okay. We That's just the explanation we were given. Oh, they ran away. Because we saw that a lot with Florida with the White House boys. Um, a lot of the children that were killed at the facility, they found, I think, over 100 bodies so far. I know it was in the 90s. It might be over 100 now. I haven't checked. But they found over 50 that were buried on site that were reported to authorities as runaways. Challenge. I just remember Teen Challenge. It's the name of the other program. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I was sitting here thinking about it, and it just came to me. That's the one you in Dublin? Do, yeah, you may want to do some investigation into that one, too. Okay. The but, you know, I once you're in, you can't, you don't have the rights of an adult because they don't let right. you. I mean, if you do not do their program, they literally drop you off in a big town, no money, no nothing, and you're homeless. And were you in all of these, Breaking Free, at some point, I Roosevelt? I was in Breaking Free, Broken Shackles, I was in Teen Challenge, I was in Roosevelt, and I was in Appalachian Wilderness. Um, but other than that, I mean, that's all I can think of. I mean, Teen Challenge, it was really, you got one meal a day, and if you were working, let's say, outside the campus, which was an old abandoned school, basically, is what it was, um... You got a peanut butter sandwich. Okay. Yeah, that was your lunch. So on top of having you guys do all this physical work, <laughs> they weren't really feeding you adequately. Yeah, and you had to pay your way. On top of the state paying for it, you had to pay for it, too. Wow. Mm-hmm. 
Now, is Breaking Free for young adults, or are we talking about the Teen Challenge? Teen Challenge okay. was where the state paid for it. Um, breaking Free is not um, state-ran. It's okay. privately owned. Most Teen Challenges are also, um, was this particular Teen Challenge um, run by the Georgia? It was run by Georgia. Okay. Because they had Georgia-licensed um, nurses there. I don't know if the counselors were, but... I know the counselor, the nurses were. Okay. Because I remembered um, I had gotten some money back from an inheritance from a relative that passed, and I had to sign half of it over before I could leave. Wow. Challenge. And I had like six grand that came in, and I had to sign right $3,000 right off the rip over to them. Wow. Mm hmm. So. Now, were they all using the similar, like, were they the similar religious um, indoctrination, um, or did they have different? The breaking free is a, like a radical Christianity, where literally, to tell you the truth, it was really like a radical version of it. That's the best way I know how to put it. Okay. Um, like, for an example, one of the things that what they call regeneration is where you had to. Post all of the bad stuff you've done in front of all your peers. Yeah. And wow. read it off. The dates, the times, everything. And read it off. Did they encourage false confession? Did they want you to say you did things you hadn't done, like uh, yeah. drug addiction and mm -hmm. things like that? Mm-hmm. Yep. I was taking energy pills before I went in, and I was called a drug head because I was taking energy pills. Wow. You mean like and pep up or whatever that is? Um, I was no dose. Jackets. Yeah, yellow jackets. Okay. Yeah, stuff that you buy over the counter. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you tell me one teenager that's never taken yellow jackets, I'll call. I'll tell you, literally, um, kiss my ass on Broad Street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, especially when it's during crunch hour. Right. During the finals. Right. <laughs> I mean, honestly. But I was taking many things, which is another version of ye yellow jackets. Mm. And yellow jackets. And I was called a tweaker. Wow. Mm hmm. Because he called me a caffeine junkie. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, they weren't Mormon. I don't know, because he took his training, because he was actually a drug head also. He was a heroin addict. Okay. The director was. He came from the camp down in Florida. And, um, but yeah, that's basically what's going on. Um, but the Cobb family, which runs Broken Shackles, David Cobb, Daniel Cobb, and Gary Cobb. Yeah. They're the ones that runs it. Because David and Daniel is the one that's over it now, basically. Because right. Gary stepped out the way. He runs the second part of it, the independent living part of it. Okay. Which is in Augusta. Um, and they're just as, I hate to say this, but they're just as whacked out as, um, which is the one over Breaking Free. Wow. So, well, they allowed you guys pop, I mean, at some point, so they weren't totally anti-caffeine. They allowed you guys to have some, I mean, but did they consider caffeine an addiction? Like, were yeah, they treating they it did. like an addiction? You were only allowed to have three Cokes a day. You were not allowed to have any ca um, coffee, no tea. And I'm sorry, a true southerner, if he doesn't have a sweet tea, then he ain't a true southerner. Um, no fried stuff while you were there, like fried chicken, no nothing. I mean, basically, it was rabbit food, and um, let's see. I think, basically, it was more like prison food. I hate to say that, but it was, everything was bland, like literally no seasoning, no nothing. Even their salads had no salad dressing. Wow. Their shower houses, um, they were basically whatever sh shampoo they got wholesale that was donated. Yeah. Um, is what you ended up with, and there was times where they would mix them all together. And I remember on one occasion, I'm sorry, I think it's funny to this day, because they tried to explain it way to all the defect persons, they never could. But when they mixed, like, I think it was like 30 different brands of shampoo together to try to call it, consolidate, it caused an allergic reaction on all the boys and made every one of our hairs fall out. Oh, no. <laughs> and try to explain that to God knows how many DJJ workers and defects workers. 
of why 120 boys' hairs are gone. Right. And we were walking around with shiny bald heads. Wow. Yeah. So shiny, look, they were waxed. That's wild. <laughs> I think it's funny, but it's because of the fact that they didn't know what the hell they were doing. Right. Um, there was counselors on staff, but they weren't licensed. Um, the calls were monitored, the mail was, everything was screened, just like at Appalachian Wilderness, so is Breaking Free. Everything was screened down to the stamp. Wow. What I mean by that, they would yank the stamp off of the envelope and literally soak it in some kind of solution to make sure no drugs went not correct. Wow. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was that strict. You brought anything in that was above PG? You had to literally be 17 or older to bring in PG-13. But um, any other questions? No, but they're going to show pornos, you know, pretty much to yeah, everyone. Yeah, that's pretty much what it was. <laughs> yeah, and sex education. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah, basically, yeah, basically that's basically what it boiled down to being. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I'm glad you got your um, diploma elsewhere, and that didn't set you back too bad. Um, I mean, I've got an associate in cooking. I've got an associate in electrical and plumbing. Um, I have a uh, psychology and sociology degree through the military, so yeah. So from your studies, you would say that none of this, um, would you say based on your knowledge of sociology and psychology, that none of this it would be considered appropriate treatment for children? It, to me, basically, and I hate to say it this way, and it's going to sound bad, but how we treated the Japs during World War II when we had them in the concentration camps out west, we yeah. treated them better than we're treating the children of our own damn country. Right. So that's basically what it was. I mean, in my eyes, and this is just me putting it this way, when I was in those programs, I feel like, I mean, how I feel now and how I've learned through the different cultures of the world and how, you know, like sociology and psychology of, like, Marxism, um, communism, Hitler and all that. Yeah. We weren't even in America. I mean, I hate to say that, but it's the truth. We were not even in America. Right. So it was very, it caused a lot of disillusion regarding yeah. what yeah. the U.S. Basically is about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at Breaking Break Shack, was, oh, we'll get you your education. We'll, you'll leave here with a trade. I left there with, I mean, I'm sorry, but the degree, I mean, the certification I earned there was no better than a piece of toilet paper that I can wipe my behind, behind with. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that was the quality of it. Because I had to start everything over from scratch. Wow. And when I found my real family, when I was in Broken Shackles, they discouraged any communications between me and my real family. Wow. So, anything else? No, I think that's good. I think that's good. I'm Thank you for being available. 